My name is Joshua Gillingham, and I am an author from Nanaimo, BC. I'm so glad to be joining you today for Vancouver Island Regional Library's Reader of the Week. My home library branch is the Harbor Front location, right downtown Nanaimo. What was your favorite book as a child? Now this I thought was a bit of an unfair question because if you are a lover of books, uh, it's hard to narrow it down to just one. So uh, I cheated a little bit and I went down to a series. My favorite series has got to be The Chronicles of Narnia by C.S. Lewis. And here I am holding in my hand my copy of my favorite book of the series. This is book five, The Voyage of the Dawn Treader. Uh, and my dad read these to me when I was a kid. Uh, I reread them as a teenager and even as an adult. I've gone back and read through the series. Um, it doesn't quit quite take me as long now to read through them as it did when I was 13 or 14, but I'm still captured by the, the story, the characters, the journey they go on, the transformations they undergo. Um, they become more brave, they become more confident as they travel to Narnia and then return to their own world. And what I love about that is it's exactly what I think a good story should do, is it should take you on a journey. Either you walk in the character's shoes or, or beside the character and you grow together, you're challenged together and uh, hopefully you return a better version of you. Uh, just like the characters often um, often do. What is a recent book that you've read? Uh, I had to pick this one. It's uh, one of my new favorite books. It's called By the Fire. And it's a collection of Sami folktales as recorded by the Danish ethnographer, um, Emily Demet Hatt. And she traveled and lived among the Sami people of Northern uh, Norway, Sweden, Finland, even a little bit into Russia. And they are known, if you haven't heard of them before, as the reindeer herders. And so a lot of their myths and a lot of the folklore um, involves stories about reindeer, um, how the reindeer came to be, some of the cultural importance of reindeer, uh, as well as um, uh, stories about the challenging living conditions. So living so far north, the importance of uh, your shelter and how you share things, um, how to stay healthy, how to stack wood. Uh, there's a whole story about how to stack wood and what will happen if you don't stack it properly. Um, so I highly recommend this. This is the English version. Um, it's not in Danish uh, and it's translated by Barbara Schulholm. I was, uh, uh, I did recently read Read this and highly recommend it if you are into uh, myths and folk tales. It's a must read. What other resources do you use from the library? I thought a library was just for books before I moved to Nanaimo a few years ago, and I discovered that there is so much more, especially at the Harbor Front location, which is my home location. On the second level, there's a Creativity Commons. It's a public maker space where people can come and use all sorts of very unique and specialized tools. So for example, um, I spent a lot of time up there working on their, uh, on their art station, which had Adobe Photoshop and uh, all the other graphic design software I needed to do some game design uh, work that uh, I'll talk a bit more about later. There's a 3D printer, which is really fun to play around with and the staff there um, showed me how to use it, uh, helped me make a few pieces. Uh, that's a lot of fun. There's a VR headset that you can just go try out for free. That was the first time I had ever done VR was in the um, uh, upper level of the Harbor Front Library and all sorts of other things. There's an amazing board game collection they used to run a Wednesday night board game night, which was great. There's um, uh, sound recording equipment and video recording equipment. Um, it really is a public learning and making space. And so uh, just beyond books, there, there's so much more that I use at the library. How do you think of your life story and how it affects your relationship with the types of books you're drawn to? I used to, uh, when I was a kid, make up stories that had a very active imagination. I was always imagining different worlds, um, thinking of characters in my mind and battles and adventures. And so not much has changed there, but what did change for me was in university. While I was there, I discovered the libraries on campus. Now there is one in particular called Rutherford Library. And I discovered a certain section that had to do with Scandinavian history and folklore. And one of my uh, branches going back in my family is from Norway and Sweden. And so that family connection sort of piqued my interest and I started reading translations of the Norse myths and translations of the Icelandic sagas, which are sort of semi-mythic historical accounts of uh, real people who did exist, um, but, but in a way that um, has a little bit of that folktale mythic quality to it. And these stories really inspired uh, me to write my book um, and it would not have been possible if uh, that had not been available to me in the library. So I'm very thankful for that. What does the library mean to you? Now, as a reader and a writer, 
the library is very is obviously a very important place. Um, the fact that we have free access to such a large collection of books, to ideas, to knowledge, to stories, to um, uh, you know ex uh, other people's experiences is expressed through either biographies or narratives. Um, that's incredible, and that is not a privilege that everyone in the world has. I do not take that for granted. Strong libraries, strong communities, 